uh, in this section, what we're going to look at is we're going to look at improving the bubble sort algorithm, and we're going to look at moving on to a new version of the sort, which is called the merge sort. We're going to try, try and describe changes that can be made to improve the efficiency of the bubble sort, explain and demonstrate the merge sort, and compare the advantages and disadvantages of the two methods. <coughs> okay, so here is the pseudo code on the left and the Python on the right. The big problem with the pseudo code and Python code is that it doesn't actually check the list to see if it's sorted in the first place. So let's say the items are actually one, two, three, nine. It would still do all the, che all the checks necessary that it thinks it needs, and it would just print out the same uh, list as it started with. The next problem is the number of checks are constantly have to be done. So this means that if I increase the numbers in the items, the number of sorts it has to do increases rapidly over time, and it gets to a point where the program will take so long to finish that it is in inefficient to use it. Okay, so this is based the same code, but what I've done is I've, I've actually worked out how to put a random set of numbers into the array here, instead of having to start in with the numbers that I've started off with. What I want to try and show you is how quickly the, the program gets to a point where it can't work fast enough to actually work out the sort for me in a time that's reasonable. So if I run the program, you can see that ten, it does 10 numbers really quickly. So let's start increasing it. So there's 100 numbers, 1,000 numbers. And as you can see each time, it's getting longer and longer to do. There's 10,000, 100,000. And then the print time's taken a while as well. It's now trying to print 100,000 numbers. So what you're looking at is the time from when I press run to when it actually tells, when it actually starts to print. So now I'm on a, a million, is it a million? Yes, run it. And now it's not starting to print because it's starting to get to the point where it can't do the search. A million numbers sounds like a lot, but when you think about it, a million numbers isn't. If I wanted to, to sort information about a population, I could be talking hundreds of millions of people. Okay, so at the moment, I'm only at this many zeros. Let's put one more in. Uh, I'm going to stop that because now it's just taking forever to print it. So I'm going to put one more naught in and see what the run time's like now. It started, it's still running. It's still doing the sort because he hasn't printed anything yet. Still doing the sort. Okay. So now we're at a point where the code is so inefficient that it's taking too long to do the sort. Okay. Don't forget, every time while it's actually doing this, it is using power, it is making the CPU get warmer, and it is stopping the computer doing other tasks. Okay. I'm going to stop it before it's finished running. So that shows you that the bubble sort is very inefficient in its current form. Okay, so the question becomes, can we stop the bubble sort doing passes before it has actually reached the maximum number of passes it needs to do? In this case, we can. What we need to do is we need, we need to look for a pass when no swaps are made. What I've done is I've changed the pseudo code slightly where it is highlighted in orange or yellow. Uh, that is showing you what I'm doing. So on line three, I'm setting a variable called swapped to true. What swapped will do is make the while loop continue to happen as long as that is true. And don't forget, it only checks the loop uh, condition when it comes to the end of a cycle. So the next thing inside the loop on number five, I'm going to set the swap to false. What this does is it sets it to false. And if it stays false all the way through the loop, it will stop when it gets back to number four. The next line is the same for loop as before, doing exactly the same set. On line 12, if I have had to swap any of the numbers in the, in the loop, what I'm going to do is set the swap to true. This means that when it then goes to the end of the if and the end of the for and the end of the while, it will go back right to the top and check the while first. And it will say, uh, you've made a change, therefore you carry on going. It will then set the swap to false. And it will carry on going through the loop until the if statement isn't met. 
in which case that means there's no swap being made. So the swap will remain as false and the loop will stop before it has to go through every single check that it needed to do. The number of passes will be decreased and it will automatically detect if the algorithm is already in the correct order. So as you can see, the bubble sort scales very badly with the item number. If you actually look at the theory, it actually scales with n squared, where n is the number of items. So if I have 10 items in the list, that is 10 times 10, which gives me 100 checks. If I have 100 checks, that gives me 100 times 100, which gives me the answer 10,000. So the number of checks increases rapidly by just adding an extra item onto the end. The better way of doing this is to change the sort algorithm to a different method. And this method is called the merge sort. The merge sort has four ways that it is very different to the bubble sort. The first is that it is a divide and conquer method, which means it breaks the problem up into smaller parts and does the smaller parts separately. So it breaks the items into small blocks, it sorts the smaller blocks, and then it merges the smaller blocks back together again. This has lots of speed advantages and memory advantages, as you will see. Okay, so this is what the merge sort looks like. It starts off by dividing things into blocks. Okay, so it checks the first two of the first block, and then it checks the next two against each other. So it's not rechecking something it's already sorted. So it's now done two lots of two. So it's now going to take those two lots of two and put them in the correct order in a group of four. And it, then it moves on to the next block of four and does the same thing again. So we'll leave the code running so you can see what it is it's doing. If you look over on the right hand side, it will also give you information telling you what the code was doing at the top. And there's a new block, so there's a new block of four. So it's only ever sorting twos and fours at this moment in time. So now it's done two blocks of four. So what it now does is sort the two blocks of four into a block of eight. As you can see, it's just taking the values and comparing them with each other to get them to go into the system. So now it's done the first half of the sort. The second half of the sort is an exact copy of the first half of the sort. So exactly the same again, two twos, take the two twos and make it into a four, check the next two twos, this time there's only one at the end so it doesn't need to do that check, sort the th last three, and then it sorts the four and the three into a block of seven. And then it sorts the two blocks that it's now got in order into one overall order with all the numbers in. So you end up with the sorted order list. And then it writes them back into the original array and it's finished doing the summation. Don't worry, you don't need to be able to code this. I'll show you the pseudo code in the slides. Okay, so the first thing the merge sort needs to do is split the array into two sections because it works on one section at a time. So the first thing it does is it divides the array down the middle. It then takes the first half of the array and starts working on that. So again, it divides that down the middle. And then it takes the two arrays that we've now got and it divides the first one down the middle. So what it's actually done, dividing by two for the length of the array, it's made it so it has two values that it can compare. It then does exactly the same thing for the next pair and the next for the next pair and then for the other side of the array. Okay, so the next thing it does is it takes its first two numbers that it's got, it compares them. And if they need swapping, it swaps them over and puts them into a two array. It then does exactly the same thing for the second half of its four pair and gets the same thing again. It then takes the two arrays that is made from the original four and makes them into one 
a four. Once the algorithm has got to the bottom and got four numbers in order from the original eight, it then does the other side of that combination in exactly the same way, in exactly the same method. So now it has two arrays that are in order. So what it now does is it compares the first number in the first array to the first number in the second array. And it chooses the number that is larger and puts that into a new array that will have the sorted values in it. So you end up with putting the numbers back together and you end up with the overall array after all. Your task for this lesson is to have a go at showing two merge sorts happen for the two arrays given on the left. The method is shown on the right. Please try and use the same method when you do your own work. To complete this lesson, you need to upload an image to your uh, showing your response to the task, which is the two merge sorts.